CQ Satellite, CQ Satellite, Kilo, X-Ray, 9, X-Ray, Rover, Kilo, X-Ray, 9, X-Ray, Rover, Echo Nancy, 2030, Gridline, QRZ. Hi, I'm Sean Kutzko, KX9X. Welcome to the fifth video in this series for DX Engineering on getting started in the amateur radio satellites. In this video, we're going to look at operating satellites from your home station using gear you may already have. I'll be showing off the station I use at home, which is far from the latest and greatest equipment out there. In fact, my station falls short in several ways, which I will be sure to point out. But that's precisely the point. I want to show you how you can use gear you may already have and start making contacts on the satellites, even if it's not the perfect satellite station using big antennas and the most up-to-date gear. Before we get started, I want to remind you to please subscribe to the DX Engineering channel here on YouTube. There's tons of great content here that will help you improve your ham radio know-how. Thanks. Operating satellites from home has several advantages. You don't have to go outside in bad weather to make contacts. You're ready to work any pass that comes your way at any time of day or night from the comfort of your own radio room. That's pretty appealing. Most home satellite operators will tell you that for the best performance, you should get circularly polarized Yagi antennas with mast mounted preamps and attach them to a rotor that does both azimuth and elevation rotation, use a modern satellite capable radio and a computer interface that will keep your antennas aimed at the passing satellite while correcting for the Doppler effect automatically. And you know what? They're right. <laughs> Having all of that gear makes operating satellites a dream come true. But not all of that gear is available to you. Uh, some of that gear costs a lot of money and you may not be prepared to spend thousands of dollars to get into satellite operating, at least at first. Fortunately, you don't have to. I work many satellite passes from my home station, which is definitely not the latest and most modern equipment. I would say that some satellite purists would probably laugh at my home satellite station. But the fact remains that I'm able to work the satellites with this setup at least some of them. Let me introduce you to my Everyman Satellite Station. Okay, so this is what I'm using to make satellite contacts at home uh, with my simple home station. On a two meter receive, I'm using my ICOM 746 Pro. Uh, this is an all mode uh, HF transceiver that also has six meters and two meters in it. And uh, I've had this radio for several years. It's my main HF rig. Uh, and so I also do uh, VHF weak signal work uh, with this radio as well. So using two meters on receive, I'm already set up for that. Uh, for transmit, I'm using an ICOM 706 Mark II G that uh, transmits uh, on 70 centimeters. I've had this uh, lying around forever. I've used this uh, primarily as my mobile rig uh, and uh, on some portable operations when I'm doing parks on the air or um, uh, something like that. Any combination of radios that will get you on two meters and 70 centimeters simultaneously is going to work for you. Uh, you can do this uh, with FM only. You can use a uh, two meter radio, a two meter mobile rig to transmit on, uh, uh, for example, and then use a 70 centimeter uh, HT uh, or receive if uh, all you want to do is FM. Um, you could also use uh, a dedicated communications receiver if you have a dedicated receiver that uh, will receive all the way up to 70 centimeters. Use your imagination. Think about the gear that you have and see how it could apply in a satellite situation. My antennas are just about as simple as you could get. I use a five element horizontally polarized Yagi on two meters that's on a push up mast about 15 feet off the ground. I rotate it with a simple Channel Master TV antenna rotor. For 70 centimeters, I use an M squared egg beater omnidirectional antenna. The two meter antenna is fed with 9913 coax and the 70 centimeter egg beater is fed with LMR 400. I track the satellites with my GoSat watch app on my phone, just as I would if I were operating with my portable station. I also keep tabs on the satellite's footprint with SAT PC32 on my laptop, but I don't have the radio control interface or the antenna rotator interface connected to this. Okay, as I've mentioned from the very, very start, this setup has some serious limitations. First off, my 70 centimeter antenna, being an omnidirectional antenna with no mast mounted preamp, 
is really deaf as a receive antenna. What this means is that I'm limited to using satellites that have a two meter downlink and I'm using 70 centimeters only for transmit. So right away, I'm not able to make contacts on 100% of the satellites that are in orbit. Second, my two meter receive antenna is in a fixed horizontal position. That means that I can't correct for polarization fading that I've described in previous videos in this series. I experience deep receive nulls for several seconds at a time on almost every pass, and they always come at the most inopportune time. This also happens especially noticeably on the FM satellites like AO91. And lastly, I often can't take advantage of the very beginning or the end of a pass because my omnidirectional transmit antenna is not being heard by the satellite until it gets a bit higher above my horizon. Now, some of that is due to the fact that I have tall trees in my area blocking the signal path, but not all of it. But the bottom line is that I'm able to be on several satellite passes a day if I wish, and I'm able to make a good amount of contacts. This setup has been largely responsible for me working over 150 grid squares since I first installed it in May of 2020. All right, so we're gonna demonstrate uh, how we can use our home station with these uh, two radios to uh, work rovers. Uh, so we have to track down their frequency and then uh, find ourselves on the downlink and then uh, work a station. So uh, Alpha Alpha 8 Charlie Hotel uh, is operating portable uh, up in Michigan on the grid line between EN83 and EN84. Okay, so there's the beacon for the XW2O satellite coming in nice and loud. Okay, there he is. He's on a different frequency. Okay, so he's on the grid line. So, for according to the K0 PBR cheat sheet, he's on 145.680. That means we need to start listening for ourselves around 435.025. That's our transmit frequency up to the satellite. I am, so I found myself real quick. Alpha Alpha 8 Charlie Hotel from Kilo X-Ray 9 X-Ray. Very good. Thanks a lot for the contact on the grid line. Echo November 5073. Okay, so uh, as you can see, it was uh, pretty straightforward. Once we knew uh, what frequency Alpha Alpha 8 Charlie Hotel was going to be transmitting on, we found him on the satellite downlink. He was on 145.680, roughly. Uh, and then we went to the KE0 PBR cheat sheet, found that uh, for that downlink frequency, I needed to be transmitting up to the satellite beginning at 435.025 and ultimately uh, found ourselves on uh, the downlink uh, by transmitting on 435.028. Uh, once we zero beated our frequency to the proper downlink frequency and zero beat with AA8CH, a QSO was very easy uh, to be had. There was some minor tuning 
uh, on both uh, two meters and 70 centimeters to keep everything zero beat while we were working each other. But uh, once we had everything aligned uh, and found ourselves on the downlink uh, for uh, on top of AACH's frequency, a QSO was very easy. I hope this gives you some ideas and inspiration on using some of your existing gear to get on and try satellite operating. While you may not be able to hear every pass, being able to experiment with what you do have may whet your appetite to get you more serious with satellite operating and expand your gear to make your station more capable on the birds. I hope to hear you on the satellite soon. Thanks for watching. 73.